Hello and welcome to another video. This is 3DX speaking and in today's video I'm going to be creating a stylized uh, ship wheel. So I'm going to be using a few reference images and I'm going to be basing this mostly on this image here uh, for the wheel itself and then for the base um, that's holding the wheel I'm going to be looking at some references but I'm going to make them a little bit different but I'm going to be making those not necessarily uh, based on uh, one of the references I'm just going to make that one up a little bit um, so since this is using a lot of uh, shapes that repeat I'm going to be duplicating um, the main shape here for the wheel and then I'm just going to reuse that across the entire model and typically what I like to do is just kind of duplicate it early uh, just so I can see what it's going to look like and if it's actually going to work uh, because I don't want to spend too much time making it look good uh, without really knowing if it's going to look uh, the way I want it to look after I duplicate the other pieces and at this point obviously those pieces don't have any UVs so eventually I'm going to uh, delete them and duplicate again um, obviously you can use uh, uh, you can duplicate by instance uh, which means whatever you do to the original piece is going to happen to the uh, duplicated pieces so that's a way that you can do it as well um, personally I just don't like it and I don't mind just duplicating the pieces after I'm done with the UVs and here I'm going to add like a rope that goes between this uh, cylindrical shape and I'm going to use a a curve for that and then I'm just going to extrude a circle just so that I can have like a rope going through here and uh, the texture for the rope itself I'm not going to sculpt it or anything like that I'm just going to have it uh, reuse um, a UV space on a rope that's just uh, straight you'll see what I mean when I do that and then I'm just gonna add a few more details to the base and uh, this is relatively low poly it's not uh, too dense um, and then what I'll do is I'm just gonna clean up the geo and get rid of some of the uh, faces that don't need to be there and uh, also going to delete half because I typically like to save uh, in UV space by um, having overlapping UVs, uh, mirrored UVs um, so I kind of like to do that just so that I can get higher resolution from a texture and that's what I highly recommend you do if you ever find that you don't have enough resolution on your UVs it's just to like um, just mirror uh, parts of the model that are symmetrical so that's usually what I like to do anything that's symmetrical I like to just kind of mirror it um, but obviously if you want unique details across the model uh, it's better not to uh, do this um, but like I said if it's for something that uh, you can get away with um, using mirror UVs uh, I highly recommend doing that just because you can save in resolution and especially if you're um, trying to match a specific depth of density uh, you're probably going to have to do something like this with uh, your props so as you can see here for the rope I'm going to just match uh, the UVs for a cylindrical shape and that's going to be my main rope uh, texture which I'm going to just be reusing across the entire uh, rope that kind of wraps around uh, the wheel here and so basically here once I'm done I just mirror the pieces and uh, duplicate and I personally like to offset uh, UVs on the pieces that are overlapping um, just because sometimes I find that uh, Substance Painter has some issues uh, baking those but uh, it doesn't always happen um, but if you ever have that issue where you see that uh, a piece is not baking in Substance Painter you may want to um, double check your UVs to see if you have any overlapping UVs and maybe just offset them and then for the high poly I'm going to um, close any holes here and just add a few supporting edges and uh, 
I'm also working in sub D mode just so that I can see what that's gonna look like when actually subdividing the model. And I'm going to take it to ZBrush and then do the some sculpting there. I'm not gonna add too many sculpting details, I'm just gonna like uh, a little bit of damage maybe to the edges, uh, but not much. And obviously I'm creating that high poly here in Maya. Uh, this is something that you can do in ZBrush as well, if you can just use the C modeler tool. Personally, I still like doing it in Maya more, uh, just because I still find it that's a little bit easier to do here. I think it's ZBrush allowed you to have like a really nice vertex control, uh, a face control like you do in Maya or any other 3D program. I think it will be perfect. Um, obviously you can still do a lot with the C model tool, but I think it's still a little wonky in my opinion. You still have to do, still have to get used to it. And um, I don't know, I just think it's better just to, for me at least, it's easier just to do it in Maya. So I'm creating that high poly here and then I'm going to export it in ZBrush and just kind of subdivide that model. Also adding some extra details as well. And making sure I'm going to combine those as well. And for the names, I'm making sure that uh, the high poly model names match the low poly. So it's the same name underscore high and then underscore low. Uh, because I'm going to be baking uh, using the uh, by mesh name in Substance Painter. And you do that because you don't want to... Well, you do that in situations where you don't want to have uh, bleeding between pieces. Like you don't want to have uh, the normal map information being baked onto a piece from another piece and this is just to keep those that information separate so in zebras i'm just going to import that high poly and i'm activating a symmetry here on the pieces that are symmetrical just to make sure that i don't uh, start sculpting and uh, without that because obviously i made the uv symmetrical in maya And here mostly I'm just going to add a few edge uh, damage, um, but not a lot. And I'm using the Trim Dynamic for that. It's the main brush to go to, I think, if you're just adding uh, edge damage, stuff like that. But I'll be adding mostly, I'll be doing mostly that in ZBrush. And then here, as you can see, I'm using that uh, cylinder and I'm using one of the uh, tester brushes in ZBrush, which is a rope. So I didn't make that, it comes with ZBrush, you can just use that. And then you can get rid of the cylinder. And that way you're going to be baking that rope onto that cylinder. And the UVs from the other rope are going to be, since they're overlapping, they're going to be showing uh, that rope, the texture on it. Obviously you might see seams, uh, so that's going to have to be something that you clean up afterwards, I think. And in Substance Painter I'm going to use uh, the 3DX stylized uh, material, there's a link in the video description for it. And I'm just going to be making this mostly uh, as a wooden wheel with some metals. And I'm going to keep it really bright and just kind of colorful. So the colors are not necessarily based on the uh, uh, reference image. And sometimes I like to add like a, a curvature edge to the model as well. And some more edge damage as well. Just to add a little bit of variation for the edges. So they're not uh, too uniform. And then I'm just adding a little bit of dirt to it. Uh, but that's pretty much it for this one. So here is what it looks like in Marmoset Toolback. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, I recommend you subscribe if you want to see more like this. And I'll hopefully see you in a future video. Do you see this environment right here? I made this really quickly using Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, and Substance Designer and Unreal Engine. You too can make something like this really easily and in a short period of time. 
To make an environment like this one, all you have to do is make a few simple props, put them together in Unreal, and then simply add some lights and you're pretty much done. So hey, this is only a 45 second ad, so there's not enough time for me to cover everything. So click on the link below now and I will show you exactly how I made this environment. The best thing about learning how to make an environment like this one is that you can simply use the same techniques to pretty much make any other type of environment. Oh, and by the way, you don't need to be an expert already in order to learn how to make something like this. You can follow along without any prior knowledge. I will be showing you the basics on how to use Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, Substance Designer, and Unreal Engine, so you can follow along without any issue. Like I said, this is a very short video, so I don't have enough time to explain everything. So click on that link below and I will show you exactly how this is done. And by the way, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this for, so click on that link now so you don't miss out.